Hello, my name is Dr. Greg Olson. I'm here today to talk to you about fibromyalgia and brain-based therapy. It is a drug-free solution for neurogenic fibromyalgia, balance disorders, chronic fatigue syndrome, chronic pain, and headaches. Your nervous system is a vital part of your health. The spinal cord carries energy from the brain through the spine like a river to all the vital organs, tissues, and cells of the body. Each one is totally dependent on that energy to stay alive and stay healthy. In your nervous system, the key messenger system or the chemical signal or neurological signal is done through what's called neurotransmitters. The brain can't communicate with the gland unless there is a neurological connection and a chemical connection, and that is done through neurotransmitters such as dopamine, GABA, serotonin, and acetylcholine. From a neurological basis, when we look at what can be associated, associated with or cause fibromyalgia, we look at brain function. In normal brain function, messages from your body go up through the lower brain stem, through the midbrain, to the cerebellum, cross to the opposite frontal lobe, and then feed back to the lower brain stem, providing what's called inhibition of the mesencephalon. The problem comes about when we get abnormal brain function. If one side of the cerebellum is not receiving the proper amount of nerve input, it cannot send the proper amount of nerve input to the frontal lobe of the brain. Then the frontal lobe cannot send the proper amount of nerve input to the lower brain stem, which will not be able to keep the mesencephalon from overfiring. So you're wondering, how did all this happen? When we look at the cause of these health problems, fibromyalgia, we look at three causes, chemical, physical, or emotional. Trauma causes a decrease in the brain's frequency of firing. Through the chemical component, that can come from poor nutrition or chemical toxicity, and the emotional component can come from uh, chronic stress, worry, and concerns. When the mesencephalon is overfiring, the symptoms resulting from that disruption in the brain's electrical vitality can include chronic pain and chronic fatigue, migraine headaches, light sensitivity, blurred vision, increased sweating, difficulty falling or staying asleep, heart palpitations, increased heart rate, irritable bowel syndrome, urinary tract infections, high blood pressure, and fibrofog or flu-like symptoms. As this occurs, there are other areas of the brain that begin to malfunction as well. And with that, we can see episodes of depression, anxiety, difficulty scanning pages while reading, adding or subtracting, difficulty expressing what you want to say or understanding what others say to you. You can have a loss of short or long-term memory, uh, loss of sensation or numbness, changes in handwriting. You can become more irritable or angry, develop problems with balance, tripping or dropping things and experience learning disabilities such as dyslexia, ADD, or ADHD. So here we will begin explaining what happens with the overfiring midbrain. When the midbrain is overfiring, there are a multitude of symptoms that will begin to express themselves throughout the body. As you can see here, you begin, begin with light sensitivity, migraines, heart racing, constipation, diarrhea, chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, urinary tract infections, insomnia, and fatigue. The overfiring midbrain affects what's called the oculomotor nerve. That causes the pupil to stay wider. More light comes in, creating a light sensitivity. The overfiring midbrain also affects the blood vessels in the brain, causing them to dilate. That nerve mesh around the blood vessels becomes irritated, leading to migraines. The overfiring midbrain also causes the, a part of the brain called the medulla to not receive proper stimulation. And with that, that affects what's called the nucleus tractus solitarius, leading to vagus nerve inhibition and constipation and diarrhea, and also inhibits urination, getting stasis of the urine leading to urinary tract infections. Additionally, overfiring of the midbrain leads to mesencephalic reticular activating system being 
overactive. The highest firing rate is at 3 a.m. Get high cortisol and what's called an adrenal stress index. And that leads to insomnia. The lowest the firing rate is at 3 p.m. And that leads to fatigue. The overfiring midbrain also goes down the spinal cord through the intermedial lateral cell nucleus, contributing to effect with the heart through the SA node and AV node, leading to heart racing or palpitations, also leading down through the spinal tract to the adrenal medulla, causing release of catecholamines, norepinephrine into the bloodstream, activating the type C nociceptive pain fibers, contributing to chronic pain and fibromyalgia, then leading to fatigue due to a loss of sleep. With emotional stress, that causes the hypothalamus to release corticotrophin releasing factor, which goes to the pituitary, causing it to release ACTH, which causes the adrenal medulla to secrete cortisol, which is toxic to the brain. So with cortisol reaching the brain, things we can, you can experience can be memory loss, problems focusing, um, and in the classic picture, what's called fibro fog. What you likely have already discovered is that fibromyalgia does not get better by itself. It's been found that the longer you have fibromyalgia, the more and faster your brain dies. The Journal of Neuroscience reports that the McGill University Center for Research on Pain has found that, quote, the longer the individual has fibromyalgia, the greater gray matter loss, with each year of fibromyalgia being equivalent to 9.5 times the loss of normal aging, quote. In addition, it is estimated that 30 to 60 percent of patients diagnosed with fibromyalgia become disabled to the degree that they cannot remain gainfully employed, and that is with the myriad of medications prescribed. The next topic is neuroplasticity. What's well, been found that of all the finds, though one is rewriting the textbook, it is the dawning realization that the brain, as it gets older than three years old, is not the rigid structure that scientists long thought, but it is actually malleable. It's a plastic organ. But a flood of discoveries show that the brain continually reorganizes itself. It's called neuroplasticity. And it means that you create your brain from the input you get. So you may be asking, how is brain-based therapy different? Brain-based therapy is consisting of a comprehensive neurological and metabolic workup. So many times in evaluating people with fibromyalgia, a couple of these tests may be done, but doing a complete neurological and metabolic workup is the key to finding the multitude of malfunctioning body systems to get results in treating fibromyalgia. One example of a test that is done on a metabolic side is the adrenal stress index for cortisol levels. So on the left slide, you can see in between the red lines is the normal patterning for cortisol levels, highest in the morning, tapering off through the day. In the white line there, you can see that the, this particular example, the cortisol level has gone up and spiked during the evening, and that contributes to insomnia and likely later issues in the day of factors related to uh, short-term memory loss, fatigue, fibro fog. On the right side, it's a display of what's called the inducers of cortisol release. Four key factors we look at for cortisol release. Glycemic or blood sugar dysregulation, tissue damage, which can include inflammation or pain, sympathetic overflow, and also mental or emotional stressors. The neurological treatment of fibromyalgia and chronic pain consists of treating cere cerebellum and brain dysfunction. The cerebellum and brain require two things in order to function properly. Number one is fuel, which consists of glucose and oxygen. Number two is activation, which can include what we call unilateral or one-sided adjusting or manipulation and brain-based rehabilitation. 
Some of the therapies used for brain activation include vibration or percussion therapy on one side of the body. It can also include gentle chiropractic adjustments or manipulation on one side of the body using either an instrument called an arthrostem or another instrument called an activator. Therapies that are used for brain activation, this can include the upper body ergometer, and uh, this therapy is done while using an oxygen concentrator. It's called exercise with oxygen therapy. Additional therapies used for brain activation can include auditory stimulation in one ear or auricular stimulation in one ear using an uh, electroacupuncture device. Continuing, more therapies for brain activation can include warm caloric in one ear, stimulating the inner ear hair fibers, also olfactory stimulation in one nostril. Additional therapies used for brain activation can include visual stimulation in one eye using small letters that make up a big letter. This is an example of looking at neurological fibromyalgia with metabolic complications, such as hormone imbalances caused by stress, blood sugar dysregulation, oxygen deficit, midbrain neurological misfiring or malfunction, cortisol elevations or depletion, and cerebellum misfunction. Success with fibromyalgia involves correcting the brain misfiring and metabolic dysfunctions. An essential part of a treatment program is periodic retesting to let us know that we are on the right track. Through this comprehensive approach of looking at the neurological and metabolic components of fibromyalgia, it brings together all the pieces and treats the whole person. Recommended actions from today's presentation. Number one, Make an appointment for an evaluation to see if you qualify for a brain-based neurological treatment program. If you'd like more information, you can contact or visit AskDrOlson.com, or you can reach the office at 949-859-5192. One of the things I found in my years of practice is that without action, you can't get results.